Rio. Neil Peart is our guest tonight. He is the drummer with Rush, the latest album, Test for Echo, and of course he is here tonight also as an author. His book on cycling through West Africa is entitled The Masked Rider. You say that one of your heroes, or one of the people you love to read is Hemingway. Uh, is there a connection there with travel, with um, nature? I think a shared fascination for the natural world as well as the civilized world and, yeah. and human nature certainly was one of his main themes of why, how people behave and, and, you know, maybe why. But uh, he's just one among many, really. I've been and uh, you drag along the philosophers with you to read. And well, it's ironic that on a, on a tour of that nature, there's not a lot of time to read, but what there is is really high grade because yeah. you're lying in a dark hut with a flashlight on your shoulder and the phone's not going to ring and the TV's not going to be on. It's just going to be really good reading. Or if you take a siesta during the heat of the day, um, it's just high quality reading time. So I tend to choose something more serious that might give me a headache at home yeah. or might just make So it. what did you read? Uh, on this particular one, I took along uh, Aristotle's Ethics and then the letters of Vincent van Gogh to... Uh, to entertain me at night, sort of serious daytime reading, uh, and uh, some something more lyrical, ro more romantic for the evenings. Hmm. And and what did you conclude having read Ethics? Well, having been a careful choice, it was a good choice, but because you don't want to carry too many books, because anything you're carrying with you, of course, uh, is weight that you have. And to it move. is quite compact. Yeah. Yeah. And so I wanted to choose two books that would hopefully get me through the trip, along with reading any literature on the area. And, yeah. and again, there isn't a lot of time, and you're pretty tired at the end of the day, so you tend not to read for long before you fall asleep. But they were, they were just perfect choices. One of them, very romantic flights of uh, Vincent's struggles with art, and the other, uh, Aristotle's clarifications of ethical behavior. You do talk and write about sort of experimenting with or trying to embrace other thinking styles mm -hmm. than our rather kind of linear approach with sure. it and how we all try to deal with it. Or mine world. anyway. I think even, yeah. you can't even generalize about Western people because I see so many different patterns of thought among people that I encounter. So explain what some of these thinking styles are that you're experimenting <laughs> with. Yeah, I, 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 the broadest extreme would be the African one where the oral tradition is, is often glorified without being understood what it really means. The griot is, is the, the name of the storyteller in a local village, for instance, but the average person you'll encounter in an African village might be illiterate, but they'll speak six languages, and not dialects. They'll speak English, French, and four separate African languages, because language is what's important. And they never did have writing, so reading and writing was really a non-issue. But they had someone in that village who could recite the entire genealogy of everyone, their entire mythology, all the way back through all their books of, of what would be their Bible and their creation myths are so complex and so interwoven and so laden with symbols and just as deep as any of ours but because they're carried in the oral tradition we either romanticize that right. as the storytellers or we diminish it as being some illiterate gibberish and both are wrong it's a completely separate way of existing and it's one reason I like to pour myself into that because first of all I'm struck dumb by the number of geniuses around me who can speak six languages <laughs> exactly. without being able to write their names <laughs> and, and that, that impresses me because I've struggled just to, to, to master English and to, and to uh, at least um, grasp French, grasp yeah. French and speak yeah. it uh, in a survival level at least. So th that's very impressive. But when you do encounter these people who can tell these stories and, and recite all this stuff chapter and verse, you have to realize there's a different mode of thought at work here and, and a different way of thinking, of observing the world, of measuring time. And again, Westerners are always making fun of Africans for being in, uh, non-specific about time. Right. Well, it's not laziness or lack of punctuality of, or lack of consideration or any of our Western They just don't have a Seiko. They yet. don't measure it that way. The sun comes up, that's the clock. The right. sun goes down, the clock's off. You know, that's all there is to it. And if they say they're going to see you today, they'll see you today. You know, if they're going to do that today, they'll do it today, or, or today includes tomorrow. You right. know, it's just a completely different way of of existing and of measuring life and of looking at life and it it's valuable to you or to any of us I think to try to understand it. How do you use that though in your real life when you come back you have family you've got commitments you you're on tour you've got to meet deadlines when you're writing your book you've got to be in the recording session I mean it's all it's wonderful to kind of think about that but how yeah. does it and I don't want to change my life either I like that I, yeah. I, I like having a lot of things going on all the time I like having deadlines I like working to deadlines I like being punctual I like other people to be punctual yeah. I like being I like it being easy to get from one place to another I like there not being armed guards between Toronto and Montreal for the existing time at least and, and you know <laughs> things like that, that that Africa is a is a separate reality 
in, in every possible way. But I like to come home with that. And what it does is it allows me to prioritize. And sometimes I'll realize that it's good not to look at the clock. And if I have a bit of time off, I'll take my watch off and put it away and try to live by the sun. And, and if I've got an appointment that suddenly is dispensable, I say, well, never mind that. I'm going to hang out with my daughter instead or, or read this book instead or just go down to the basement and play drums. How old is she? How old is your daughter? Eighteen. Eighteen. And what does she think of dad sitting in the basement playing his drums? <laughs> <laughs> well, the joke is that she's a great natural player of the flute, and ah. she never practices, and yet impresses her teacher like crazy every week. And I have to practice. I'm the opposite kind, where it's only my hard work that, that rewards me with improvement. So she's always you know, teasing me for having to practice when she's naturally gifted, and I'm always bugging her to go practice. I don't have to practice. My teacher thinks I'm great. <laughs> but are they also yelling at you? I mean, I guess my worst nightmare would be living in the house with a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's never been a very popular thing. And unfortunately, uh, you know, people are glad to listen to a piano echoing, echoing across yes, the lake, but yes. not drums. So it's an antisocial thing for some reason, which personally I don't understand because I love the sound of drums, but uh, truly, <laughs> I, of course, I do understand. But uh, I, I practice in the, in the daytime down in the basement, so it really doesn't bother anybody. I want to hear some of your music, and none of the videos are out from the new album, the Test for Echo album, but we do have one from uh, Counterparts, the album in 93 and a song entitled Nobody's Hero, and, and you do do the lyric writing mm -hmm. for this group. Yes. Um, what's it about? Um, like most things, it's about a whole lot of things. I was trying to come to grips with what a hero really was, you know, as opposed to what our society makes one into. So I chose the sports heroes, of course, and, and the, the celebrity darlings of, of uh, Hollywood and TV and that. And I thought, is that really a hero? And I thought, no, a hero is the guy who brings down the crippled airplane or, or solves, solves the mystery of a, of a wasting disease or um, pulls the child from the raging river in flood. You know, these are real heroes who, again, my highest value is human life. So people mm -hmm. that directly affect human lives, those are heroes to me. So I wanted to try to grasp what that, what that meant. But at the same time, there were certain people in my life who had a heroic stance. And one of them was the first gay man I ever knew. And I lived in England when I was about 18 and worked alongside him in shops in Carnaby Street. And it was my first introduction to the whole world. And uh, he would invite me to his parties, just as the song said, you know, and I'd be, you know, one of one or two straight people there. But it introduced me to this whole, you know, beautiful world that I really liked. And I didn't feel threatened by it or anything because I hadn't been yeah. acculturated to be that way. Yeah. And it, it changed, obviously, my whole outlook on the culture, the gay culture, if you like, for the rest of my life. You know, I, I would never have a, a chance of being homophobic. And in fact, every time I thought of gay people after that, I thought of this friend, Ellis. And then um, just a few years ago, of course, we lost touch over the years. I moved back to Canada, and, and I heard that he had died from AIDS. And I thought, oh, this is a tragedy of heroic proportions to me. And then there were other ones that I don't want to discuss personally, yeah. but the other people that around me who were directly involved in other tragedies on that kind of scale that just moved me in a personal way and occupied that heroic stature, I guess in the classical Greek sense of tragedy on a heroic scale, um, was another aspect of it that I wanted to address and get away from empty heroes and, and people that just look good <laughs> or people that just play a game well. You know, this is not enough to me to be a hero. You have to yeah. change somebody's life. Let's take a listen to Nobody's Hero, and you might just want to watch the drummer in this particular segment, too. It's hot. We tripped When I heard that you were gone, I felt the shadow cross my heart.
Well, the sound of Neil Peart and Rush, that was not from the new album. That was from Counterparts in 1993. Correct. Have you seen that lately? I have not seen that lately, no. <laughs> you don't sit around at home watching the video? No, ironically, videos I usually see once when they're finished and somebody says, what do you think of this? I think it's fine. Boom, off it goes. You know, And, and the music, uh, ironically, sometimes you never listen to it for 15 or 20 years. We've been in rehearsals lately for a tour and uh, kind of thinking about songs we haven't played for a yeah. while that we might bring back for our entertainment as much as for the audiences. <laughs> and uh, there, were, there were ones that we would bring out and go, Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and there was one ago, from yeah. 15 years ago that we had never played live ever, just by circumstances. We'd chosen other songs yeah. from that album to play at the time, and it just got overlooked. And it was a nine-minute piece too, so pretty complex. But it happened to uh, tie into modern technology of art. It was called Natural Science. Right. It was about that science is the same as nature. If we're going to survive, we got to tame it. We had to survive. We had to tame nature, of course, to have shelter over our heads and have fire to warm ourselves by. And science is going to have to be the same. So that was the theme, and it's very timely now as it was then. It's so, amazing how some of those things. Yeah. So we, we're, we brought it back for the current tour, and, and we really liked it. So. Neil Peart is our guest tonight. The new album, Test for Echo by Rush, has uh, just been released, as has his new book, The Masked Rider. We'll continue our conversation right after this. You know, ideas